Congress flirted with economic disaster last summer when it wrestled over how to increase the nation's debt limit. That event, along with others as small as renewing unemployment benefits or as large as health care reform, have caused outcries that Washington is broken. Here to talk about the real reason behind Washington's gridlock and whether markets can expect more congressional log jams is Jared Reezy, White House correspondent for Sirius XM Satellite Radio. Jared, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for coming on. Jennifer, thanks for having me. So, Jared, everyone says bipartisanship is over, but you say there was never bipartisanship to begin with. It was earmarks that made the system work. Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of grease that goes into these skids, but uh, honestly, most people in Congress had a reason to do something when they brought something back home to their districts. This is something that was taken away when the Republicans had a two-year earmark ban. That was part of their wave in 2010. When they were elected, and this was a landslide for the House Republicans especially, that was part of the platform. That has decreased the level of bipartisan cooperation significantly in this Congress, the 112th. So is this level of gridlock the new normal, or is this earmark ban a short-term experiment? Well, the earmark situation is probably here to stay as long as we have Speaker Boehner. Mm -hmm. But the, the situation with the, uh, with the debt limit and some of the other things that caused the intense logjam last summer. We are we are on the train, in the tracks, headed directly for the cliff. I mean, this is something that is going to be revisited this summer. Uh, when uh, I was in the White House briefing room this week, I asked, especially after the, the meeting that President Obama had with congressional leadership, there was no agreement in substance about whether or not everyone was on board avoiding this this calamity again mm -hmm. that is not what they're all committed to in fact uh, speaker boehner came out immediately after saying he was not going to settle for anything without uh, significant action taken to reduce debt the president has said he's not going to allow it to happen again but it seems like that could be just a token if we're moving toward another summer of congressional block Right, so we know it's an election year. We know that nothing is probably going to get done before the election and that this impending fiscal cliff, uh, which involves the Bush tax cuts, which are set to expire at the end of the year, along with unemployment benefits, the payroll tax, and of course, uh, automatic spending cuts that are expected to kick in the 1st of uh, January 2013 to the tune of $1.2 Is Congress going to be able to come together and kick the can down the road uh, in the lame duck session, or like you said, are we going to see a repeat of what happened last August with trying to raise the debt ceiling? Well, they always tend to work these things out at the last minute, Jennifer, and that's kind of the, the sad irony of watching the, the drama that is Washington. But whether or not it's something that addresses the substantive concerns below the issue or, as you say, continues to kick the can down the road, I mean, there's got to be some kind of bruise on these feet mm -hmm. if we're kicking all these cans. Frankly, what's happening, most importantly, is that while Congress may get a deal, uh, the deal may involve undoing some of the reduction and deficit reduction that was done as part of last year's compromise. Mm -hmm. Basically saying that they may take away any of the good that was done in order to get another deal. Mm -hmm. So what are your expectations for the deal? You, you just said that you think that some of what was done uh, last year will be undone. Can you list some specifics? Well, I think most specifically, the Republicans in Congress are going to be pushing to remove the uh, the spending cuts to the Defense Department. That's something that, that we saw uh, pushed very heavily in the uh, House Armed Services Committee. Chairman Buck McKeon and also the Speaker were both pretty forceful saying that this is something they're not willing to countenance. And they were even citing uh, the Defense Secretary saying that this is something that uh, may affect our national security. That's going to play really well for Republicans come November. But if they are successful in pushing that back and getting those those uh, those defense spending cuts rolled back, the the spending may come in other areas, including uh, snack assistance, which is uh, food stamps, uh, and, and meals up and a lot of other things that, that affect the, the lowest income in the country. What's your best guess for the outcome for November, both for the presidency and the Congress, and how does that bode for gridlock going forward? Well, the, 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 so the two questions are, 
uh, whether or not the president will be reelected and whether or not the, the right. situation in Congress will stay the same or change. Right. And I think that the president has a very strong electoral college benefit when we're going into November. It's very hard to see a way where Mitt Romney can get 270 electoral votes. Now, in recent weeks, national polls have shown that Romney is gaining on the president. In some polls, even matching or beating the president by a few points, usually within the margin. But of course, that's not how the president is elected. So when we're looking at the presidential, it has to be a consideration of electoral college votes. And that's, of course, focusing on swing states like Iowa, Pennsylvania, Florida. Now, when we're talking about congressional elections, uh, both the, the, R, uh, the Republican National Congressional Committee and the DCCC have both had very good uh, fundraising months in April. They, they just released that data this week. And while they're both prepared for a bloodbath in November, I think it's very hard to imagine Republicans losing control of the House, but they may lose a little bit of their margin. If that happens, you basically have the same gridlock for another at least two years. Mm -hmm. Now, the question will be if the Republicans can take the Senate. Now, there are a lot of seats that the Democrats are defending in the Senate. They're defending more seats than Republicans are. Mm -hmm. That, by very nature, is beneficial for the Republicans. So in that situation, the Republicans could get to a point where they're either balanced the Senate or they've got a majority. But even a majority in the Senate doesn't give you control because I don't think anyone's getting to 60 votes, which is what you would need to have supermajority control. And without a supermajority, I can't imagine the Republicans taking a, a substantive control of the Senate. And basically, you have the same gridlock for two years. And of course, what that means for markets and what that means for everyone who's waiting to see if the uncertainty dies down, I think it stays. I think the doomsday clock gets a little bit closer or stays exactly where it is near midnight. All right, Jared Reese, we'll go ahead and have to leave it there. Thank you so much for coming on and for your insight. Hope to see you and soon. Thank you.